What is up, guys? Thank you for checking out another video, guys. I really appreciate that. If you have not joined the Guido Stacking community, make sure you subscribe for more videos on all things precious metals. Today, I want to talk about whether it's a good time to buy right now. And it really comes down to what level you are at in your stack. So if you're a newer stacker or if you're an experienced stacker, if you got a lot of silver and gold or if you got a little silver and gold, is it now or never for the new stackers? So for a lot of the experienced stackers or the guys that have been doing this for a long time, we got real spoiled. And I think that's why a lot of, um, I see a lot of people saying that they are not buying or they're holding off on buying or they're not buying nearly as much. And I think that's a lot of the experienced stackers because we don't really have that, um, you know, that fear like, oh, do I have enough gold and silver? I need more. It's going to skyrocket. We don't really feel that emotion that a newer stacker would feel if they only have maybe 10 ounces of silver, you know, it, a small stack just getting started. You, you probably feel more pressure on whether you should be buying more um, and kind of just like really buying a ton before it gets out of hand. And I think that's why a lot of us experienced stackers have scaled it back. But there's a lot of things to consider here. Um, you know, whenever things happen, it usually takes a while for the dust to settle. So right now, if you just take a step back and just really pay attention to everything that's going on, all, all the signs point to gold and silver going up. All the signs point to cryptocurrencies going up. Recently, I just started seeing commercials for cryptos showing that they're printing all this money and an, another form of hedging is cryptocurrency. Along with that, I've seen a lot of commercials for gold and silver. When you start seeing a lot of commercials, you know something's going on. It's on mainstream television, gold and silver, the hedge, inflation, uh, you know, gold has risen 500% since, you know, this date. When you start seeing that, there's, there's a trend that's starting to happen. And it's actually something that I do with my stocks that you've never heard of. If I want to take a gamble on a stock I've never heard of or a brand new company, I have a rule of thumb. And that is if I hear this company that I've never heard of three times, then I will research it and most likely buy it. So for example, before Snapchat became as big as it is, at the very, very beginning of Snapchat, I've never heard of it. And these girls at work were using Snapchat. So I'm like, what is that? And they explained it to me. And I said, okay, that's strange. Then my little uh, nieces and nephews started using Snapchat. Then I heard it again on the radio. At that point, I looked into Snapchat. I ended up buying Snapchat when it was about $5 a share and ended up selling it around 17, 18 a share. So that's an example, the same thing with gold and silver. Once it starts hitting the mainstream and people that are not aware of gold and silver being a hedge for all this inflation that we're gonna have, I mean, it, the numbers have not come out. The statistics haven't come out. But let's just be honest. There is gonna be a lot of people that are not gonna be able to work for a long time. For an example, I'm furloughed from my job. And the statistics that we're seeing for the unemployment is people that have been laid off or furloughed. But how many of those furloughed people are going to end up being laid off? And they're saying that it's going to happen big time with hospitality. And that's just one industry as an example. So you got these people that are just furloughed for the moment. But at what point do these companies decide, you know what, we actually need to lay these people off? And it's happening. You look at these big corporations, American Airlines, Delta, um, they're about to lay off a lot of employees and it's just going down the line. All these things, these little things that are not getting a lot of attention 
are going to start piling up. The stimulus packages, the unemployment that's being dished out, all those things um, are going to cause inflation. And we've already seen prices going up. I mean, have you gone to the grocery store? How much is a pack of meat? I mean, two, three months ago, I guarantee you it was cheaper. So all this stuff is going to start piling up and it's only beneficial to gold and silver. So how do you strategize your stacking right now? So if you're an experienced stacker with a decent amount of gold and silver, which a lot of you guys, I'm sure, are on the same mindset as me. You never have enough, right? I mean, I would buy whatever you see a deal, you know, a deal, not five months ago deal, a deal in the now, <laughs> right? So what's a deal now? $28 for an ounce of silver? Sounds good to me. Five months ago? Absolutely not. That's a semi-numismatic coin. That's a limited mintage coin price, right? So things have changed and <clears throat> there's going to be a point where you're going to really have to decide because I think gold and silver still have room to go. And silver right now is in a position where, you know, it could go either way. We're right in the middle. It's not um, at the high end, which I would consider the high end of silver being around the 35, 40 back as it did in uh, 2012 around that range. That would be the high end for silver in my book. So right now we're kind of in the middle. I mean, it could go back down to 19 or it can go up to 30. So you have to kind of teeter your expectations according to how you want to buy, right? Now, if you're a new stacker, I'm sure you're feeling the pressure. I mean, you know, you only have X amount of ounces of silver, maybe not even any gold yet. And uh, I'm sure you're feeling the pressure, but you're going to have to decide as well. Am I going to start going in or do I kind of hang back and just buy at my leisure? If you do that, you are risking the chance of silver really running away in price or gold really running away in price. And the thing you gotta realize, if you really just started, you don't know what happened when silver took a massive dip a couple months ago, all the way down to about, I don't know what it was, $11 an ounce or $12 an ounce, something like that. There was absolutely no way to buy that dip. None of the dealers were selling any silver at $12 an ounce. Um, Scottsdale Silver, who is more of a wholesaler, uh, sold pretty close. They sold at 15 or 16 an ounce, and I actually made a video on it when um, I found it out on their website. That was the closest thing to buying a dip. So whenever you get those emails from the dealers saying, buy the dip, you know, silver went down $1.50 today, buy the dip. You're not buying the dip. You go on there and it's still $29. It's still $30 for an ounce of silver. That's considered a sale now. So <laughs> you really got to decide. And I don't think waiting for the dip is the best way to do it because we've already seen that uh, there's almost no way to buy the dip. Almost no way. And even when uh, some of these dealers were doing the buy at spot price, those were on hold until silver reached a decent price. And then they sold out. If they really sold out, who knows? A lot of the mints are closed still. So, you know, the, the mints are the ones producing those, those 10 ounce bars or those five ounce bars. It's not the dealers themselves. So if the mints close, there's nothing they can do. But whether it's due to the mint being closed or them uh, not you know, try not to take a loss, a massive loss, because I, I don't know if they actually do make any money on those. But regardless, um, waiting for a dip might not be the best strategy. And gold is a little bit of a different scenario than silver right now. Gold is, is pretty expensive. And I think gold is going to continue to be more expensive. That's just my opinion. Um, like I said, if you take a step back and you just see what's going on in the world, uh, you know, now we got some stuff going on with Belarus. Another thing going on. Uh, I mean, it's just, there's so many things um, in the world. You know, the money being printed, the, these companies that are going under. I mean, just in my area alone, guys, 
uh, there was a huge list, I saw it on Facebook, of restaurants that are closed. And some of them, you would think they would never go out of business. A huge list, just in my area, this list was huge. Probably about 50 restaurants. And you know, you multiply that by all the cities in the United States or all across the world. And I mean, we're talking some serious, um, I mean, uh, you know, like I said, the dust has not settled. I think gold and silver have a long way to go. I think crypto might even not be too bad of a buy at the moment. But the dollar is uh, gonna take a beating. And like I said, those unemployment numbers are not legit. They can't be legit because how many of the furloughed people are gonna end up being fired? So we see a lot of these, the unemployment um, unemployment rate going up, um, or I'm sorry, going down, but how many of the furloughed people are gonna end up being fired? And, you know, just kind of in limbo, like me, I'm in limbo, you know? And I have a feeling that I am gonna end up being fired and, the long, and laid off, you know, in the long haul because uh, I just don't see the hospitality industry coming back. And, you know, it, it's just a really crazy situation. And the situation now, if you look at the trend in 2008 to 2013 for gold and silver, um, is way worse now than it was then. Regardless, no matter what, if you're going to stack gold and silver, you should have a long-term mentality. This is not a place where you really make quick money. Uh, this is definitely more of a long-term thing. So thinking like that, even with the prices the way they are now, a little on the high-end side, yes, but if you believe silver and gold will continue to go up, which a lot of us do because it just makes too much sense that gold and silver will continue to rise, then if it doesn't, let's just say it comes back down a bit. Let's say it lingers back down in the 16, 17 range. And that's where it is from now on for a while, like it did. Then you just dollar cost average everything you've bought now, you, you've you purchased now. And it'll work out in the end, that's all. I mean, but for you to sit back and wait for a dip, I mean, we're just not gonna find those deals anymore. You're just not, not the way the market is now. So, and another thing, the stock market has been volatile again. Usually it's been kind of steady, believe it or not. But recently it started being volatile again and that's causing a lot of fear. And I guarantee you that is why a lot of all the prices went up today. We got platinum, palladium, gold, silver, all four big metals went up today. And I guarantee you that's why. Um, there was a huge dip and today it recovered a bit. I bet you a lot of people cashed out and maybe they're starting to make a play at some precious metals because the volatility is too much. I know I took a beating and I, I made up some of that money, but uh, that is the chance you take when you mess with stocks. Gold and silver is a little bit more steady, but even gold and silver lately has been really volatile. But in the end, I just really see, uh, if you look at what moves the gold and silver price, the metals prices, and look at what's going on in the world now, there's no way that you think gold and silver is a bad investment, even with the prices that we have now. So yeah, you might wanna tailor your buying, those of you that are experienced, tailor your buying, slow it down, because you already got a decent amount. So that's okay, you wanna hang back, you're happy with what you got, maybe you buy a couple things here and there that uh, catch your eye, but for the newer stackers, I would suggest not rush buying, don't overbuy. I always say never to overbuy. It's the worst thing you could possibly do. But continuously adding to your stack, I think is a good idea because I do see gold and silver going up. But you gotta really make your own judgments at the end of the day. I mean, if gold and silver go down, I don't want you to say, oh, well, I listen to you and that's why. You gotta make your own decisions. But if you Google what moves the gold and silver prices and then really pay attention to what's going on in the world right now. 
I guarantee you, you're going to see the benefit of buying, even with the premiums of today, even with the prices of today. So, like I said, you just got to shop around. Right now, the going price, $29 an ounce, $30 an ounce. That's pretty much what silver is going for. Now silver went up again, so it's probably in the 30s again. You're not going to find anything cheaper than 30 bucks an ounce. That's just how it is. That's how it's going to be. And it's been like that for the past two months about, right? About two months it's been like that. So uh, this could be the new norm. And sitting on the sidelines is not going to help you out that much. So I say if you're a new stacker, get in there, start buying. Don't panic buy, but buy. Don't be afraid. If it's if it goes down, like I said, you could liquidate. You could take the loss. If you need the money, you liquidate. You get the money. If you're uh, you know financially trying to budget for gold and silver and it's difficult, you could liquidate. Get the cash. And if it goes down, you just dollar cost average. You're not gonna do it just for this year. I hope you're gonna do it for a couple years. That's when gold and silver is the most beneficial. When it's a long game right so just keep that in mind stop focusing too much on the now and start focusing a little bit more on the future and pay attention to what's going on in the world i still i think it's a great buy even for me that i have a decent stack even for a lot of the experienced stackers i still think it's a good buy to continue to accumulate um constantly is a good idea regardless of the price regardless of the premiums but definitely don't expect to buy any of the dips. Not going to happen. Not going to happen. So anyways, guys, let me know what you think down in the comments. Let me, let me know what you're doing right now. What's your strategy to navigate these high prices, these premiums? Um, you know, put the information out there for the newer guys, the new stackers. So that way they can learn. Maybe they like your ideas better than mine. So put that down in the comments and let's get the discussion going. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for checking it out. And I will talk to you guys later.